following program may contain language of an adult nature. Listener discretion is advised. Views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of Old Talk Radio dot net. We are anonymous, and you're listening to Maxwell Silverhammer. Fuck that guy. And E.J. Jerkman. Yeah, fuck that guy too. Only on STEM Radio. Damn, this shit really hurts me. Oh man, hold on, wait a minute. This is some bullshit. They're canceling the fucking show? Yeah, they're planning to drop it us after seven years. What bullshit? Still got people listening and like the show. Well, guys, you had a good seven-year run. What more do you want from us? You're like a goddamn Oreo cookie. It tastes like shit, but swathed in the center. Okay, goddamn it. Our hands are tied, okay? Yeah, you're goddamn right. Your hands are tied. Jerk, pass me the duct tape, man. Motherfucker. Right, oh, wait a minute. What are you doing? All right, tape, tape them together. Bitch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, motherfucker. You know what? I think I kind of like this. Yeah. Tie it a little tighter. Oh. Tighter. Will Silverhammer, G.J. Jerkman, Cruise Control, and G. Motors. Motors. I think somebody lit a cigarette. Nope, it's the hottest radio show on the internet. So keep it locked here from 7 to 9. Still radio fan. They ahead of their time. And now it's lesson one, man. This is lesson two. No format because they keep it fresh and new. And this is what I call a real show. They tough as hell with a hard edge like a steel tough. It can't paint like a bass head. So if you're mad at them, call in. Fuck some hate mail. And if you think that the jocks sound quirky, allow me to introduce you to the shit that irks me. Irks me. Irks me. Right, you sons of fucking bitches. <laughs> Welcome to the shit that irks me. I am Maxwell Silverhammer. Well, where's, what's up with her mic there? I'm not on the air. Fucking jerk. I'm uh, AK. Men. Men. Uh, we got to get the right ones uh, on. You're on the wrong Ocelot's, one. Yeah. I had her on too. That's why. Uh, okay. okay. And I'm Ocelot. He just doesn't want to turn our mics on. That's all. Uh, and I was obviously introduced when she said jerk. DJ Dorito. <laughs> DJ Jerkman, huh? <laughs> well, on the phone, we got Winfrey out of the Glass City. What's going on, Winfrey? Hey, hey, hey. Man. How you doing? Man, you know, I was introduced to your production back in 2007 when you did okay. Angel's Music. Back in the day, yeah. that uh, which Angel's been on the show, um, okay. and um, you know that I love the production, and so you know I haven't heard anything from Angel since then, and and whatever. So I'm like, man, where can I get more of that production? So I had to track you down, and I got you. Okay, great, <laughs> so, great. Glad, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for uh, inviting me. Absolutely, absolutely. So obviously, you know this is internet radio. You can say what you want. I'm sure you're going to get fired up at some point during this interview. Um, you know, uh, give us a little resume, man, a little rundown on what, you know, we, your production, because obviously you've been doing this for a while. Yeah. So so what? give us a little resume on you, man. Okay, well, um, uh, I started playing music long, 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 long time ago, and uh, I actually started getting involved in uh, hip-hop and uh, the rap side back in 96. And then I worked with a lot of the locals here in Ohio, uh, local rap artists, and um, started doing some good stuff. And I uh, was um, uh, able to put together some material for um, a cassette CD back then. And uh, ran into a lot of great artists, a lot of nice people, good guys to work with, good guys to collaborate with. And, and since then, I've just been inspired to keep doing it. So basically, that's where... That's where that started, all the recording started. How, how old are you? How old am I? Yeah. 54. Oh, man. So, <laughs> at the yeah, time... I'm, a, I'm ancient. I'm ancient. <laughs> I'm, yeah. When, I've, been, I've, been, I've been here for a while. No, when, when hip-hop first came out, man, how did you look at it? Were you like, oh, this is some bullshit, this is not going to go anywhere? What? Well, well you, know, you know, I was in a band. I was in a, a band. We actually played a lot of funk uh, music back then, you know, all of the Prince, the Time stuff and all that. And as soon as this rap thing came around, you know, a lot of the band members and musicians started getting very discouraged because, you know, everybody was sampling and beatboxing and just using drum machines and whatnot. And uh, so there was a lot of discouragement, and a lot of people felt that way. 
but I felt like, you know, I want to be a part of this shit. You know, I mean, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to find out where I can fit in at. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay with this because I love music. Right. So I want to find, uh, you know, when things change, you change with it. So um, that's whenever I started meeting uh, these talented guys, these talented writers. Um, uh, just a whole other genre of talent, a whole other genre of art and rap. So I was able to. Um, hook up with some people and learn how, you know, learn their styles and kind of blend theirs with mine, and, and it just kind of worked. And so at first it was kind of discouraging because, you know, it felt like there was no place for you, you know. Right. But, you know, I'm one of those people that, you know, I'm going to hang in there and find a way to fit in, you know. So that's kind of where, where that, how I felt about that. Man, well, I just, you know, like, and obviously what I love about your music, man, is you keep it, Original. I mean, you know, you know, you know, it's Winfrey production. It's not like you change up and do this beepoo music that everybody likes oh, nowadays. Okay. <laughs> great, great. I'm glad you appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. I mean, because look, look at the stuff that's that's coming out now, man. A lot. There's nobody plays instruments anymore. Nobody, you know, does. There's no, no talent. No it, no, it really isn't. I mean, you know, it takes away from the. You know, there was a time when you could see. Um, you know, kids going down the street with guitars and stuff, you know, going their way to practice or getting lessons or whatnot. And you just don't see a lot of that anymore. You don't see, you know, you don't see a lot of the kids interested in taking guitar lessons, drum lessons. At least I don't see it. I mean, you know, usually, uh, you know, people are just doing everything online now. You know, people people are downloading a lot of things and, and just kind of making their own thing right at home. They don't, you know, they just don't take the art of learning notation and all of that stuff everything is already pre-programmed for them so it's it's, it's actually sad because you know they it's, it's, a, it's like almost like a lost art form it's like you know people don't need to learn how to read music or not necessarily read it but how to you know actually play it themselves you know they just pick a patch or something that's already been created and you know there there's some you know there's some creation to that too don't get me wrong but it's not the same well, oh, yeah, it's, it's 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 definitely a loss at some point. Yeah. Well, you got now people are buying beats, man. I've actually had people on the show, and I'd say, well, who did that beat? And they say, well, I don't know. I bought it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's easy. They're not gonna. They got not gonna mess with trying to learn, learn how to do that kind of shit. You know, they're gonna. They're just gonna go for it, man. They're gonna take the. You know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with working because I worked with a lot of you know great uh, producers on this album, this new album, and. And it's been great, you know. A lot of the some a lot of the uh, the music production that I got were f- from uh, artists over in France, uh, uh, in J- uh, California. Um, I've, you know, I've worked with artists all over that that uh, produce music. So it's a, it's a good thing, but they're actually playing their own music. You know, I mean, they're 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 creating it. Right. They're not, you know, just sending, you know grabbing it from somewhere and sending it to me. They are actually creating it themselves. So. And it's and it's in my style, you know. what I mean, they 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 know what I do, and they know what I like, and they know you know how to you know what 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 fits me. Right. So that's how you know I work with other people, and that's how it's been working out for me. So there is some you know some good producers out there as well that can create really great music. So that uh, that's always a good thing too to know. Well, you know, like, like let's talk about the new new CD, No Negativity. You know, you've obviously branched out, man, and you were grabbing rap. You got MC8 on there, I know that. And uh, who are the few, a few of the other acts, man? Some of them I've never heard of, but they're they're all pretty good. Oh yeah, we got that guy like Gifted. He's a uh, he's uh, a local uh, artist here. Um, Six Digit. I've worked with him before on another project. Um, uh, Tony Ray is a great uh, great uh, great artist as well. You know, I worked with him back in uh, 1996, 97, and uh, you know, so I pretty much, uh, pretty much kept with a lot of the uh, people that I've worked with over the years too on here. So I've been, you know, working with them on their projects. And so I mean, I've, I've, I was really blessed to run into these people because, man, it's just, it's just the talent that's out here is just amazing. You know, when you get with some of these guys and, and you hear, you hear, hear their their lyric, hear hear their, their what the things they have to say. You know, like I'll create a I'll create a, a beat or I'll create a um, uh, a scenario of a for a title. I'll get my hook together, and I'll have them to come in and say, "Okay, here's the hook. Here's 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 what I'm saying. Okay, here's you know you're gonna take a 16-bar verse here. So, 
you know, and they're hearing it. I don't know what they're going to do. So it's entertainment for me because they're taking it. They're taking just what I've got in the course or the, or the hook, and then they're creating their own story behind what I gave them as a title or a hook. And when I, I hear it back and see that they have where their mind went with my idea, is, man, it's just it's just crazy because a lot of times it's like, man, how did they think of that? These guys are so talented. They have to do so much more wording than I do as a singer, as a, as a songwriter. Right, right. Writing songs, they have to, you know, for, for a 10-word a, a sentence for me, you know, these guys don't put 50 words in that little space, you know, where they, you know, because they're, you know, they're rapping or whatever, and it's just so cool to hear what they, what they do. So, you know, so I've been uh, fortunate to work with some great people. So, you know, it's, it's been good. And obviously you don't, you know, you, you let them keep their creative ability. I know sometimes, you know, you'll have producers all of a sudden, telling rappers, no, 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 don't say this, don't say that, you know. So right, right. Well, well, that's well, that's 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 part of the the uh, the joy, from my point, is to ask when you ask these guys to come on, you you're asking them because most of the, you know when I ask somebody to do something for me, it's probably because I've heard them before, and I know what they're capable of doing. So I want them for what they do. I don't want them so that I can try to mold them or recreate them to what I'm doing. I'm already doing my thing. Right. You know, I want that collaboration uh, and the combination of what I'm doing to blend in with this other artist to make something totally different. And, and, and you know, from, for everybody that I've worked with on here, um, it's just uh, amazing. You know, it's just amazing the things that, that, that these guys can do. And um, I've been so fortunate that I've run into these guys, man, because they are, these, guys, these guys are killers, you know. So, man. You know, that's, well, you know, I actually want to jump into something off your Gotham City CD, um, and this is a track you did called Hollywood, and and this totally brings up what you're talking about because where you said you had a concept, and then later it seems like it kind of morphed into on the No Negativity CD, uh, California. Okay. This this is so we're gonna jump into that. So hold on with us, and we'll be right back. Okay. Talk to you some more. Cause six is not just Bobby Then after the party It's the after party You ain't even gotta ask me shorty It's going down out Hollywood Yeah we ball like sugar I got love for my city And I always should But I heard the weed in California's always good I'll be standing in the hallway Like I always stood And they gon' put my name On the walk of fame With my handprint six Did this off the chain It don't matter where you at Money talk the same I got Californication on the brain I'm talking about where it's always sunny, all day, every day, everybody getting money, that's, that's where I want to be, living that life of luxury, come and fuck with me, and where they pour out bottles, where the clubs never close, and the hoes are models, that's, where it's always sunny, if you 16 or 50, everybody look 20 out here, I could live with that, I could 
can come back and visit in a minute. I'm back on it. Yeah, the glass is nice, but I want to experience the glamorous life. I could live with that. I could come back and visit in a minute. I'm back on it. Yeah, the glass is nice, but I want to experience the glamorous life. Hollywood. Man, all right. We're back on with Winfrey. That was off your Gotham CD, your Gotham City CD. Okay. So we were bumping that. Now, is that what later morphed into the uh, California track, which is on your No Negativity CD? Well, actually, you know, those were totally separate uh, situations there. You know, I just, you know, I, when I was coming up with, uh, with the Hollywood thing, I just, I was in this, this mode, you know, it was just, it was just the, the, the music is what kind of, just kind of got me flowing into that, you know, the Hollywood thing and the video with all the glam and all that stuff going on. Right. But uh, this California situation was, uh, um, uh, I was uh, asked uh, by a producer in France named Soviz. He, uh, he had a project going, and uh, he, uh, he asked me, because I had done some work with him before, on a, uh, another project that he had going on and some talk box on a, a feature on, a, on one of his other artists and he asked me if I would uh, you know would I come aboard and do some talk box on this uh, this new song that he was producing for uh, an artist so I said sure so he uh, he sent me the track and I was listening to it because all of the parts were there all of the, the rap artists were there and I'm listening and I'm like man the one, the one rapper sounded really familiar to me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, man, that sounds like MC8. So uh, I, uh, I, I uh, did my part. At this point, the song didn't have a title. And uh, so they said, just put your hook on there and, and then just tell us what you, you know, just, you know, just do what you feel, you know. So I'm like, man, this is so tight, you know. So I said, is this 8? He said, yeah, this is MC8 and Quick to Mac and Lil Half Dead. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he's like, Cla I mean, I mean, shit, look, MCA, look, right. I did it. You it's jumped on a track like, with those oh, guys. What? You know, so I'm sitting here, now I'm really screwed up because now I'm like, I'm not going to be able to write now because I'm sitting here listening to this shit, right? Right. So it sounded so great to me. So um, finally I put my, 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 my parts down. And, and the one thing that um, MCA kept saying in the hook was he was saying California. You know, he, he was saying, you know, you know, the California thing he was saying in the hook. So I'm like, man, I just, that, that was what I gravitated to. I just gravitated that, so whenever I sent the track back, I, um, I asked them, you know, I made up a title for it just so I could send it back, send the file back, right. and they kept that title, you know. Oh, wow. And that's how, that, that, that's how California became, and they, just, <laughs> they, they kept that title, which I thought was great. So that's where that came from, but that was not, that was not related to uh, the Hollywood thing until, you know, now it's like, wow, that's so cool, you know, they're both you know, Hollywood and California. So right. I just kind of thought it was, that way. I thought that was the original concept. And then you figure, well, you know what? I'm going to go get some rappers that are a little bit known and then pop them yeah. on this track. That's what I thought you did. So No, no, this, uh, no it kind of worked out a little differently, man. But, uh, but it, 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 was, it, was, it was right on point, though, you know? Hmm, man. That's, uh, and you've got a remix to that as well. It must have, that's really must be a single you're pushing. Yeah, that, uh, that's one of the, that's one of the favorite tracks on the on the album, and uh, so uh, the producer actually, you know, um, you know, sent me another uh, another mix of it. So I wanted to put that on the album as well. So 
I use that as well. So, yeah, so it worked out. It's working out really good. I really love it. And, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's working out really good. What's the uh, meaning behind the title, No Negativity? What is that supposed to mean? Okay. Um, it's, uh, it has a lot of meanings personally. Uh, for me, a lot of it is just uh, uh, more, more universal, you know, I mean, as far as, you know, we, we need to keep a positive attitude in anything that we do in life. So the less negativity you have to deal with in anything, it would seem to be a better situation. With me, I have uh, been through some things with, uh, with you know, just life, with different people and different situations trying to make things happen. And a lot of times you find out that uh, the things that slow you down, I don't like to say stop you because nothing can stop you from doing anything. Okay? Right up death <laughs> but i like to think that you just have to take a different route you know some things just make people or different situations make you have to go do things differently right. i'm a person that believes in turning off the clock and turn off turn off the clock don't worry about what time it is don't worry about um uh how long it takes you to get something done let's get it done so um and whenever i think about the, some of the things you know you have to deal with it's just like i just want to think of the uh, music process of a no negativity thing, you know, like I'm not going to deal with any, when, when I see something coming that seems like it's negative, like it's going to be a problem, I find a different way around it rather than trying to deal with everything because that thing, that takes time. If you can, if you can avoid the potholes and you can avoid some of the things that you know are coming, and, you know, life just, yeah, life isn't perfect. So if you see something coming, you need to take your ass around it and go the other way. So this is what I mean by no negativity. Just do what you have to do and avoid the negativity if you can. And that will give you a better outcome on anything in life that you're doing. So that was my whole concept, my whole feeling behind through this whole process of this, of this album. And it, it played good for me through the whole thing. So I was very fortunate that um, it's been 99.9999% it's been positive. <laughs> so it was mainly in the recording of the actual album, so you didn't have to deal with, say, you know, because I've heard stories, man, where, you know, they're in the studio and weapons are pulled out or, you know, these guys are getting oh, high yeah. and stupid shit. Yeah, you know? I, I, you, yeah I, hear, I hear that shit, too. But you know what, man, I tell you, I must have been the, the blessed, most blessed guy ever because I have never had that experience yet. I don't ever want to have that, but I have never had that. You know, I have... Um, I have asked uh, everyone that I have worked with. I have, you know, I've asked them, you know, respectfully. You know, it's always, it's always, you know, it's always been on a respect thing. You know, you ask someone, and they say, you know, they, you know, they, uh, you let them hear what you're doing, right? And then they decide yes or no, they're going to do it. And usually, when these, every single time when these guys come to the studio and they're ready to record, they come in and they do it and they leave. I'm telling you, it is it's amazing. They come in and they. I spend more time in the studio trying to get my parts right than these guys do. <laughs> they come in and they, they lay their shit down. They, they throw down two, a couple tracks of whatever they're doing, and then they're out of there. They're, they're done. I mean, wow. they, they come in and they got their ride out in the parking lot, and, and, they, and, they, and, they, and they come in and they do their thing and they leave. And it's not a, it's, it's not a problem. It's not, a, it's not problematic. It's no drama. You know, it's, it's, it's just, it's always has been this great thing, even with doing like video work, you know, I've, I've done a couple of videos and it's just been so smooth. So I think a lot of, I would say a lot of that kind of stuff, you know, people bring that stuff in from the street maybe, or something that may be going on in their life outside of music or outside of the studio that actually, you know, follows them there, you know, right. and I've just been fortunate that you know, I haven't been involved in anything like that, so, uh, you know, I've avoided that type of, uh, but I have, yeah, I've heard of that, and I've heard it, I've heard of it around here, you know, where people have had those situations, and I'm like, whoo, <laughs> well, It sounds like, sounds like you handpick your, your, who you're going to work with pretty well, though, you know what I'm saying? You know how to discriminate. You don't just throw anybody on a track because they can rap. You know, no, you, you, know, you, you, you have to listen. You have to listen, and you have to appreciate, you know, who you, you know, you, you know, I've, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be able to have pick artists and you know based on not just their you know just their ability to, to you know so a lot of people are talented when it comes to writing but you know um, 
you, you have to be a rounded person. I'm not trying to say I follow somebody through their personal life and make sure they don't get in trouble with nothing. Right. It's not that. It's not that. You have to. You can tell a lot from a person by the work that they do. Right. And when you and when you when you when you hook up with an artist and you see that they are somebody that has a, a history of continuation of of of, of, of making progress. And you and you look at that and you say, wow, you know, I've, I've watched this guy. You know, he's he's got a few CDs out. He's doing his thing. He's 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 continuously working. He's 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 doing things. And uh, then these are the people that you want to work with. You right. Know? And 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 I have you know I have been fortunate, like I said, to have you know have uh, approached these guys, and they you know they have some kind of respect for me as well as an artist. So. They they are they are thrilled or at least uh, you know uh, okay with doing it, and I have been uh, you know like I said fortunate to have run into the people that have been uh, you know non problematic in that way, so you know so it makes it makes things go a lot easier when you're trying to create because there's there's enough there's enough issues that you have to deal with you know technically and all that kind of stuff that you don't really need somebody to come in and you get a whole session set up and you got shit going on and then all of a sudden you got somebody that that don't show or you got somebody that shows up and they're drunk Uh you got somebody that show up and they too high they forgot their words or they just now writing their words (laughs) stuff like that you know these guys here have been man I tell you they they, you know, I ask them to do stuff like uh, uh, the one artist uh, I mean I, I, I can name any I can pick anybody on this album I mean I can't even I can't even pick. I, I can pick anybody on here, and every one of them, every one that I've said, hey, here, you know, write something to this. They're back with me in a couple of days, and they got like the whole thing done, and they 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 running it to, past me, and I'm thinking, wow, how did you write that so fast? I mean, and it's and it's just so perfect, you know. So, uh, so I've been, you know, I've been fortunate for that, that so far. You know, I hope it continues. I think you're good though. You probably have a. Uh, you probably have a good. Um, I'm sure if somebody approached you, and, and you probably have people approach you with bullshit, where you just kind of like, nah, I'm not really going to work with them, man. I, I just get a vibe. You know, you're probably good at picking up on vibes. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. You know, and I tell you, I, uh, you know, I, you know I, I try to, uh, you know, if something like that happens, which it hasn't happened much because I'm a, I, 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 I keep a low profile kind of, you know, uh, when it comes to that. I don't, I don't just try to be out there like I'm looking for something all the time so I don't have to uh, deal with a lot of people that may not be as ready I don't want to see as talented but as ready to do anything uh, so I don't have to deal with a lot of that so but I have seen people I know other people personally that have dealt with you know getting somebody on their word and then they and they and they actually get them to come to the studio or actually get them to come right to the spot you know like it's time to, to, to show, you know, it's show time. You know? Right. And then they, that's the first time that they get an opportunity to, to hear this person. I'm thinking, what did you do that for? Right. You know, you should at least ask them to just let them hear your a recording or something they did before or something, you know, but I, a lot of guys I know have, have stuck themselves like that. Oh, yeah. And I, I, you know, I mean, it happens, you know, I'm sure it happens a lot, but uh, I, I've, I've had a couple of situations like that. Uh, uh, where it was just it was just too funny. You know, it, it never went anywhere, but it was it was good for a laugh. But uh, I think the guy knew that he that he you know that he was being laughed at, so <laughs> he he didn't come back. But uh, it wasn't purposely. It was just that some of the other guys that were there whenever he came. You know, I had a bunch of other guys that were sitting around that were uh, waiting to do their part too. And this guy comes in and he's doing his and. You realize that it wasn't working, <laughs> so he decided not to come. <laughs> hey, at least he caught on, though, man. Some people, you know, they're like, "Yeah, that was fun. Can I come again?" You're like, "Oh fuck, no." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah they do. They like, "Oh man, that shit was tight." Man, do you be like that? You know, like, oh my god, <laughs> they wouldn't even listen. To it, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they bring like twenty people with them. You know, I I never understood that yeah. too. It's like they got a fucking oh, entourage. Yeah, well, it's because they gotta they gotta have that cheering section. <laughs> they, they gotta have enough people. They gotta have enough people to say they're doing good. Ugh. So that you know when they know they're not, they can still say we're so and so like this. You know, <laughs> so it just kind of gives it, it brings them that cheering section that they feel they need. Maybe that's what you it know, is. So. <laughs> it's a yeah, well, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure it is because I mean most uh you know most people you know they they you know, they, they, they don't just try to bring all that baggage. You know I mean why do you need a whole busload of people to come in there and lay down? 
two minutes oh. worth of a verse. Dude, we've had you people know. do it at the radio show where they come on the show and they bring like 20 people with them. And you're like, what the it fuck is like, this? We only got four chairs here. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> where are you going to put all these people at? Yeah, you got people and, uh, leaning against walls and all kinds of yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and they're not even there for that. I said, who are you? You know, I'm just here with him. You know, right. you know, I, I have I have seen that. I, I I see it other places, but I tell you what, I have truly been the most I had. I was in a session uh, where I uh, I thought, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna knock this I'm gonna knock this a, a lot of things out in one day. So I had uh, like uh, four, five. Uh, there was this one song I did. Uh, uh, it was uh, um, uh, ride. The song Ride. Oh, on off your first CD. Yeah. Yes. They, uh, this, uh, they're off the new with the uh, No Negativity CD. This is, uh, there was um, three artists that was rapping on there, and I had them all come at the same time at the studio, lay down their verses. Uh, and that was probably the most that I've had at one time you know, at, a, at a session was like, you know, three artists because they were all on the same song. Hmm. And uh, man, it was just so smooth. Them guys walked in there. One after the other, it was unbelievable. I mean, we were sti- they were still done within like within a half an hour. You know, all the rap was laid down. And wow! After these guys, after these guys left, the engineers were looking at me like, okay, now you gotta, <laughs> now you gotta do your part. So now it's the rest of the day. I'm there trying to lay down my talk box parts. You know, these guys already got their shit laid out. So, wow. so that's probably the most I've experienced. Is just like if I had a multiple. <laughs> multiple session where there was like four or five, or like like two or, two or three people on one song. Then they, then they obviously, you know, there was more people in the studio. But yeah, I've, I've seen that where they, where they just packed the house with, with people that don't even, that's don't horrible. Even need to be there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, man? I want to jump into a track off the No Negativity CD now, though. Um, this is a, a message to you. So we're gonna jump okay. into that and hang on with us, and we'll be right back to talk to you some more. All right, sweet. You was trying to tell me something. They was like. Slow down, kid. You're moving too fast. I'm thinking if you can't keep up, it's too bad. I'm not one to brag, but man, I'm getting cash. Money in the bag. If you ain't first, you're last. The strip was getting hot and the raids was getting bad. Caught but not cuffed, man. What kind of shit was that? Around that time, I get popped with two felonies. Sitting in the cell, I hear a little voice telling me. When your life gets crazy, don't you think that maybe it's trying to send a message to you? Man, that's exactly what it do. I'm thinking back like, I ain't see it. It's all adding up and I don't believe it. The only thing left for me to do is slow down. If I only knew then all the things I know yeah. now. Yeah. Your life gets crazy. I'm seeming like a savage, man, you gotta think I live in the jungle, look at my habitat Two with the facts and that, I gotta keep the map intact Dope plus hustle equals money, so I'm stacking sack Just where the battle's at, my spirit trying to battle back Showing me a better path, but still I run up in the grass It's something I ain't seen or ain't had I ask my mama for the remedy, she looked at me and said When your life gets crazy Don't you think that maybe it's trying to send a message to you now I just gotta decipher the clues My baby girl's on the way I'm unlikely to lose And though I'm tired of the stroll It's the road that I choose Until I find a better way My devotion's to do Whatever I gotta do To get my message to you When your life gets crazy Don't you think that maybe It's trying to send a message to you Tried to hear him out, but the racket in the street is so loud, it drown him out. Have mercy, I know I ain't worthy, but help me out. It's getting hot up in these streets, and I'm tempted to air him out. For all my paid dues and the shit I've been through, with all the different pictures and the members of my crew, you probably thinking like, damn, thought little homie, what you do? What it do? Why you acting brand new? When your life gets crazy, don't you think I got the message like an inbox. Trying to keep my focus and hoping before the end comes. That I'll be allowed to watch my son grow and then son. It's all on me, can't let her be a victim. I think I got the message, I'm ready for you to listen. When your life gets crazy, don't you think that maybe it's trying to send a message to you?
I, you know what I like about that song, man, is it's the whole message in general. Because what you're, it's not like somebody saying, "Oh, my life is hard" and this and that. But you're actually saying, "Man, you know, this <laughs> shit's trying to send a message to you, man. You're fucking up too." You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so that's why I picked that one. I was like, man. Yeah, yeah. That, that was a good choice. That that's exactly what that was about. Just, you know, just you know, you need to you know look around the whole picture. Yeah. You know, just to get the message of you know. Well, I hear a lot of rappers. You know, they complain about how hard it is and life in the streets and I'm held down and all that type of shit. And you know what you're saying is, dude, this part of it is internal. You know. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You have to find out what part of what part you play in, in your life, you know, in, in everything that happens to you. You have to you have to take credit or fault for everything, you know, uh, wherever it comes, you have to, you know, have to take that. And that's, you know, that's uh, another good thing about uh, the writers uh, that I've, that I've, uh, that I'm working with. Uh, Gifted is one of them. Uh, he, he was the one, him and uh, 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 SS Fame was the uh, rap artist on this message to you. And, you know, when you give these guys this, this, these titles and these concepts, you just tell them what your little story is, and and they just take it and they just, they just turn it into something. You know, they 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 know exactly. It's almost like they're reading your mind. They know exactly where you're going, and 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 they've had enough experience, you know, that they can, you know, a lot of it's you know personal stuff. You know, a lot of it they they can write from a personal standpoint. Right. And uh, yeah, that, t- that takes a lot of that takes a lot of talent to be able to even th- even though we experience a lot of things, can we actually talk about them? Can we actually um, um, find the words to say them? You know, to right. people and and to and to do this and to do it in rhythm and to do it in time and a lot of times rhyme. You know, that that's that's that, that's an art form. That that is truly an art form. You know, and and these guys are definitely artists. Uh, in the best way. You know, the, the track that kind of straight, well, I think it was great, a great track, and we will play it later, but it, and it uh, kind of strayed away from your kind of production, but you did a nice job with it, was uh, Nightmare, man. What what inspired that one? Oh, my goodness. You know, I am, first of all, I am a big um, uh, Batman. Okay, oh, that Gotham like, City, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know, I guess that don't have shit to do with that. But <laughs> I, I do like, I, you know, I do like the dark side of things. Mm-hmm. Not so much the dark as in the bad, but dark as in w- when something is dark. Someone said this to me before. I couldn't find the words to it. But somebody said when something is something is dark, mm-hmm. it it has more, uh, it gets more attention. When, when it's something that's light, you, you, you don't have to look for anything because everything is there. Right. But when it's dark, you, you, you search more for things. And it's just kind of a metaphor for just like just having something that's dark, or something scary, something that's a nightmare, something you can't see, something that's uh, a mystery to you becomes more in, entertaining, intriguing, or whatever. So with this whole concept, I just wanted this um, something that, that was kind of... Um, uh, Something that was a little scary, but it was a little dark. Just, just something that make you go, "Ooh, let me see." You know, where would you know? You know, I mean, this this is kind of creepy. You know, what would you do if the lights went out? What would you right. do if you was out somewhere in the dark? What would you do if you had to go, cut through a graveyard to go home? I mean, <laughs> would you really be afraid of that? You know, I mean, when you have uh, nightmares, is, is it something that you really are afraid of? Is it, or is a nightmare actually a dream, or is it just something that you're living? And that's kind of where this was coming from. It's just a story about uh, uh, just, uh, you know, just it, sometimes the negative things, you know, going back to the negativity thing. Right. Sometimes the negative things that happen in our life are looked at as nightmares, you know. So that's kind of where that came from. And actually Ad- Atomic, which is the uh, rap artist on here, he just took it to a whole nother level. I he mean, did. he just he just wrote some stuff that I was just blew me away. I'm like... Man, where do you guys get these <laughs> get these <laughs> lyrics from? Where do you get these words from? I come out with something simple like, "Hey, write about a ghost, write about a dream, a nightmare, a bad dream," and he comes back with this with this whole story. And uh, man, it just it just so that, that that's kind of uh, th- this album was really uh, more personal to me because I actually got to do some things that you know, like you, like you you picked out. I'm so glad you did for that's 
we know that you're really listening, and, and I appreciate that. Absolutely. But that, that, that you noticed that there was something, that this, that this song was a little different than something that I've worked at on before. And it's true, and um, it's because that's, that's part of, another part of me that's coming out that I do kind of like the, the whole gothic thing, the dark, the, the dark side. And this was one of the songs that I was uh, able to do that kind of expressed some of that. And I got pleasure out of that, taking something that was kind of a dark, because it, it, it plays well live. If you're doing a live show somewhere, you can do so much with a live show with something that's dark, because it, it just brings more attention to the audience. It's more entertaining. Right. You know, with the show, with the stage dark, and it got something kind of scary going on. The music is kind of mysterious sound, and it just makes for a better uh, visual, too, as well. So that's kind of where all that came well, from. Well, you know, it's funny, because you are a producer from the Midwest, and I noticed a lot of stuff that comes out of the Midwest is dark and horror y and all that kind of stuff. So that really did show your Midwestern producer side of it. But, okay. but yeah. then again, a lot of the stuff you generally do, you know, when I think of Winfrey, is very lighthearted, West Coast rolling, you know, type shit. Yeah, I mean that's 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 the comfortable side. You know, music music is uh, a reflection of of all of our emotions. I mean, there's there's times when uh, I wrote a country song. Oh you really? Know, I wrote a country. I wrote a country song for with some talk box. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, no. Oh, I was like, I'd love to hear some country with a talk box. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just talking. I'm just talking lyrically. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I'm just I'm talking lyrically. No, not with the talk box. But uh, I was just saying that, uh, you know, we, we, we have different moods, you know. Uh, our emotions change. So then when we listen to music, sometimes you may, when you're rolling down the street, you may want to put a different CD in, something that you can ride to, something that's just smooth, when you know you got a long trip. Then there's some music that you may play that may be a little bit more aggressive. You may throw in some some uh, some uh, uh, rage against the machine or something if you get that if you, right. if you go there and uh, you know there's sometimes you just want to hear some rock you know you want to hear something that's just got some some screaming guitar you know so we have different moods that we get to get into so a lot of that you know a lot of times I'm just in that 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 that, that funky little G funk thing and, and it just it just that's probably more natural to me as far as the musician goes because I'm a funk artist right. and so that that plays well smoothly with me. So that's, you're going to probably hear more of that from me, you know, than most anything else when I'm doing it, you know, you know, when I'm, you know, I'm not collaborating with too many other people. So, yeah, that's, 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 that, that's my base, man, is that Midwest, the Midwest funk thing is, 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 where, is where it came from, you know, so, yeah. Well, that's why the Nightmare track, you know, it's, it's such a deviation, but it's so, you do it well, man, and it's like, wow, okay, you know. Well, well thank you so much, <laughs> man. Thanks for appreciating that. Thank oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. That's why I was like, wow. And, you know, the, the track really, it kind of fucks with you, the story, and then, you know, at the end when he's crying, and you're just like, oh, shit, you know. So. Yeah. yeah, what happened? You know, you want to know, damn, what happened? Did something get his ass or something? Or did he just wake up, or was he ever asleep, or, you know, <laughs> right. and I, I tell you, it, it could make for a wonderful video, you know, because you could do go do so many things with that, so many different directions, so that's, uh, you know, that, that kind of stuff excites me, because I'm an I'm a entertainer, you right. know, I like to think of every song as being a visual, how, how can you... How can you show somebody this song? I mean, they can hear it, but how can you? If you had to, if they had to just watch this song. What would you do with it? What could you do with it? So that's one of those songs that would make a, make a great video, make a great visual, because you can do so many things with it. Especially for, with the ending, you know, he could somebody could have happened, could have happened to his ass, or he could have just fell off or something, or just somebody just beat his ass or something. Well, he writes. <laughs> I mean, he lets you know what happened. I mean, he drove over a bridge, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he's a dead man, you know. So you're just like, <laughs> fuck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, he did let you know he rolled over for a bridge. Oh yeah, and uh, you know what's up, you know, and you're like, Oh wow, that's that's uh, that's 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 a, why you know, why did he go over, you know, it's like this would be really that upset that somebody, you know. Right. It's 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 interesting. Well, that's why I said, Ben and I did mean that on Facebook. I was like, Man, this is like one of the most slept on producers you know, because, I mean People should be hearing your shit, and they don't, man. And it's it yeah, sucks. you know that's uh, that's uh, that, that's another thing. That would be that would be the shit that irks me. That is <laughs> shit that irks you. Yeah. Is, is that is that this society? We live in such a throwaway society, what especially when it comes to music. And it's like you know we got all this talent in this country and it's in this world, you know. 
and especially in the United States, you know, they just so fast to, you know, get somebody new, and and they're, and they're cool for a year, and you don't hear from them no more, and they they might looking for something else. And these other countries, like you know, these European countries, Japan, and Europe, and France, and all that, these people really, really appreciate music. They really they they they, they stick to the basic, the original shit. What's they good? Are really yeah. still big on the American uh, funk and uh, real soul music and you know they got things so twisted up now where they call in certain things soul music that to, to me is not soul music no. you know everything sounds the same how can you determine whether that's R&B or if that's hip hop and so it's, it's, it's you know it's not like it was back in the 80s and 70s if you will and, and early you know and you know 80s and all that you know now 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 you you, you 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 don't have all that you don't have that as much diversity of music as you did before you know and people don't want to hear anything else you can't just play there was a there was a time when you could put on a radio station and you could hear uh, anything from a funk song to uh, a jazz song you could hear some Grover Washington or you could hear uh, 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 Parliament Funkadelic, and right after that, you could hear some Roy Ayers or something. Right. There's no way you can just listen to uh, 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 unless you listen to a specialized station that only plays certain things. But you just can't just listen to one radio station and get a whole whole different genres of music and different flavors of music. You, you, you're not going to get that anymore. So, but the other countries, man, they they are you know they are really feeling you know where 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 we come from. They're not just on the 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 um, the who's hot today thing, you know, they appreciate music from from the from its roots, you know. So that's, that's a great thing. Yeah, that, that, and like just some of the stuff you hear now, it's very aren't even R and B is so soulless. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, talking it, it about? Is. It, it is, and, and 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 they they and if you notice, they most of these uh, people are going back doing um, remakes, you yeah. know. They're doing remakes. They're, they're, they're trying to remake a lot of the old stuff. It's like, you know, because they know that they're not getting the same quality of, of uh, in most cases, not every case. I mean, there are some good, talented people out. But, but in most cases, you just want to find one or two that's actually giving you something that you want to hear. Most of, these, most of these new artists are going back redoing, you know, old songs. You know, I mean, redoing older stuff that's already been a hit, and they're just putting a couple more runs in it. And, and, and taking music out of it. You know, when was the last time you heard a guitar solo in a pop or a drum solo or anything, or a bass line solo? You don't hear nothing. Now it's right. just one, you know, it's just, you know, it's, it's, you don't want, nobody wants to hear it. It's too much. Well, and then it, you... It, 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 yeah, it, it takes the simplicity out of it. And they don't want to have to fight to listen to try to figure out what you're doing. Well, it's, so it's sad, you too, because you got good producers, you know, that are yeah. going, okay, well, this is what sells, so I'm going to dummy down my sound so I can fit in with what's going on today. And it's like, dude, you just totally, you know, anybody who you had on your fan base now is like, well, fuck him. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You have, to, you have to be real careful and try to stay true and just, you know, and find your audience. I mean, that's, that's, that's you know, that's, uh, I've been, you know, I've been around a long time, and it's, it's taken a long time. You just you just have to turn the clock off, as I say. You turn the clock off and just do what you do, do what you love for the reason that you love to do it, and then and be true to it. And then your your fans will find you. You you will you will be able to share what it is that you love to do with somebody else, you know, and without sacrificing uh, trying to you know because you can't be some you can't be somebody you're not. Or you can't do something you can't do. If you can't do it, you're not going to be able to fake it very long. Well, they so think they can. At some point, <laughs> at some point, you're gonna be, a, you're gonna have to, you know, step back and go, oh shit, you know, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do here, you know. So, but if you're doing something you love, or something you know, you know where you're at. So that's that's always a good thing. That's yeah, it's just tough, man, <laughs> to see somebody who's so good. You know, one that comes to mind for me is uh, DJ Quick. You know, I mean, he was great. Oh, yes. You know. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm what sure. Talent. I'm sure you, yeah, I'm sure you loved his stuff. But now I listen to his oh. music and I'm like, what? Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, he's still doing. He's doing. It's just that you're not going to hear it on the radio. Well, or you just you know doesn't sound you, as good. It, it don't sound. Oh, I, I, haven't, I haven't heard. It. I haven't. Uh, I haven't heard anything in his new stuff or anything. Oh, he's but. he's got a new one that's really. It's just like he's trying to follow what you know the. the oh blueprint. really? Oh yeah. No, I haven't. I haven't. I know. I, I you know. I, I tell you what. I, I I get my music like I get my movies. I find something that I like, and I if it's even if it's an old movie. 
if it makes me laugh and I get some enjoyment, I'll watch that damn thing over and over. And it's the same way with music. I go buy old music. I go buy music that, uh, you know, basically I listen. If I listen to, to music radio, I'm listening to the oldies station. I'm listening to the, uh, the oldies stuff. The, or, or I'm listening to the classic rock station. I, I, don't, I don't listen to... I, I, that's just me. It's not, not for any, you know, I'm not trying to boycott nobody, nothing like that. Right. It's just that I'm just more comfortable listening to something that takes me away from me for a minute, you know. So if I listen to radio, it's usually something something different. So, uh, But, no, I, I, I can only do what I do. And if I want something different in my music, I'll just invite somebody to come on to add that the flavor. But it'll still be the same, you know, flavor. You know, it'll still be me, you know, so... Uh, you know, I'm 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 real fortunate to be able to you know to still enjoy that aspect of what I'm doing. So. Well, well, Winfrey, we're coming to the end of the hour, man. So, and I want to thank you for coming on with us and spending some time oh, with man. us. And uh, thank you for having me. Well, real quick, man, let's let's get all the info as far as like you know where can people pick up this No Negativity CD? And okay, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, on online. You can get it at iTunes, Amazon, Spotify. It's available on all the uh, internet stores. Um, CDBaby.com slash Winfrey2. You can get that there. I have uh, other CDs there, too, as well. Uh, so you can pretty much go online and, and pick it up, uh, you know, anywhere. Uh, and uh, I'd like to say this, if you allow me. Sure. Uh, I just want to mention a few people, a few, few key people for me. Um, and actually, I feel like with all of these people I'm about to name, I feel like I'm just a front man to these talented people that helped me to make it, all of this stuff happen. First of all, I want to thank all of the performers and the artists that's on the album. Richard Payton, Chris Stoll, he's another, uh, the, he's my engineer, Alex Hernandez, Sylvain Silvizzo, John Doncos, Eric Carlisle, Nathan Connor, Tony DeVault, Bugsy, Joe Miller, all my friends at Superfresh, Tom Kirk, Waz at Smooth Swing Records, Oliver from France, Xavier from Laidback Sounds and my whole Winfrey family and my whole Facebook family. I love all you guys. So thanks again for having me on the show. I, I saw Joe Miller's comment, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he told me to. Uh, I was supposed to say, <laughs> I was supposed to say all that, but I told him. Yeah, I think he already just did it. <laughs> I'm like, I was but thinking Joe, about it. I was like, I hope he mentions Joe because I'm gonna call him out if he doesn't. <laughs> Joe said he started it off. <laughs> he got you your first keyboard, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think back. Oh damn, did you need it? Oh man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. Thanks again for having me on. I really appreciate that and. Uh, uh, I love your show, and uh, hey, you know, keep doing the good work, and, and uh, man, we, we'll keep listening. We got two more slaps coming from you. We we're gonna play uh, after you jump off, man. We're gonna play um, Nightmare, which we just talked about, and taking it back from where it started. So, oh, cool. So you know, we're gonna rock it on those. So here we go, man. All Thanks right, again man. for hanging on with us. All right, man. With great pleasure. <laughs> All right.
from a widow written right on the coffin it says i loved him and i lost him i left her alone and uh she was so broken up but he wasn't holding her he was consoling her i uncovered the story and discovered what's before me but this ain't my nightmare this is my purgatory this is my purgatory this is my purgatory this is my purgatory
Double Dutch bus with the white wall. Shooting them craps on the sidewalk. You know what it is. Project living as a kid. You first love. Remember that kiss. Close both eyes then you miss. Remember that. Throwing at me down from your big brother. Eating blow pop to see both suckers. And it feels so good to come from and make it out the hood. It's all good. To feel like that. My community, I gotta give back. So I'm taking it. I miss those days and ain't no other way to put it Creeping down the steps watching daddy play tunk <laughs> But he let me come down once he got drunk And if I tell you a secret, please don't tell my mother I drank cold duck with my big brother But this'll be my last sip of the liquor Because I gotta get home before the street lights flicker For those who didn't make it, two things were certain Your butt was hurting and tomorrow you'll be peeking out the curtain Watching all your buddies ride their bicycles Popping willies for the girls eating pickles Or digging in the cereal box for the prize at the bottom Memories, who got them? We're taking it We are anonymous, and you're listening to Maxwell Silverhammer. Fuck that guy. And DJ Jerkman. Yeah, fuck that guy too. Only on STEM Radio. Damn, this shit really hurts me. Was it a relief to hear something that was actually something you could groove to? You know? like, I could understand him. That helped. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't it was some cool. bullshit. It was cool. It was cool. It was good. Yeah, it was I actually enjoyed it somewhat. It was yeah, actually so good, good music. He had a lot of good stuff to say, and, you know, so no bullshit. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't, you know, no send all. Did no. you play that? Did you have him come on just for us? No. Oh, I liked his music. <laughs> I like his music, his production. So that's why I was like, but I knew you guys would like it, too. So that's why I was like, oh, okay, this will be a plus, you know. Yeah. But, you know, I have a question for you, Jerkman. Yeah. So I'm thinking about what you were telling me the other night of how your mom wound up having to clean up when I took a shit, you had to clean the toilet afterwards. Yes. Ew. Why was your mom stuck with the daunting task of trying to clean the toilet after I shit in it? Well, because, see, what happened was is I went into the bathroom, and it just had, like, this reek of smell in there. I thought, Ugh. what the hell is that? Oh. So I was like looking around. Right Dude, I don't think that was me. <laughs> so I opened up the the back area and I looked in and I said, "Oh my God, you got to be kidding me!" 
<laughs> there is shit. That's funny to you. All over on the <laughs> side, and it was just stuck, you know, like on the, the side think, of the bowl. Uh, yeah, I don't. You were the last oh, one in there. You sure it was me? You were, yes, you were the last one you. in there. You should be embarrassed. Uh, you know, that was just. I must have just had an explosive shit, I guess, you know? And I walked out. I was like, oh, no, oh, no. I was looking around for something, and I was like, you know, there's got to be something to scrape that off, but I'm not doing it. They don't have a janitor here? Well, yeah, but the problem is is that they show the place around, and people do come in and out, and they don't. I mean, it was fucking disgusting. I mean, because there was a shit smell in there several times, but that was Well, I'd imagine there would be. In. It's a bathroom. But, well, yeah. But the... What? She's in love with that blanket. Should I wipe with that blanket? Uh, <laughs> oh. Not unless you want AK to kill you. <laughs> and I think she would do that, too. I've seen her cuddle that thing. You would die. Wow. So that's, that's, uh, so you. No, it was a. all over the place. I, I, yeah. When you said, oh, I could go take an explosive <laughs> shit, you were right. I mean, because so it, it looked like. It looked like a monkey was in there throwing its feces all over. Well, no, it wasn't. Okay, if it was on the on the. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was inside the bowl. Okay, but it was, was like all say. over the inside of the bowl. It was just disgusting. I mean, damn! I must have had an explosive shit. You must have. But I just—it was funny that your mom had to do the. So they couldn't wait for the janitors, I guess, huh? When well, the whole thing is, is other people come in and out of here. I don't want them. And then there was like um tobacco all up on the freaking sink okay, area that part I, I understand yeah that I got yeah, that. yeah but the having to clean the shit man come on well no i mean it was bad i mean it was stuck all over the inside of the bowl so wow man you're I, gross <laughs> yeah well <laughs> look she won't even look at you you're learning something new <laughs> i didn't know it was like that that's just nasty that was literally when you say explosive you were not lying i must have had to really take an explosive shit what does your bathroom look at at home Oh, it's pretty bad too. <laughs> you just got, like, Do you not have shit. a toilet brush by your toilet to at least he wipe it down? He probably has never washed it ever in his well, entire I, time being. He has a maid, right? That's, that's why I have a cleaning lady that comes. Oh, that poor no, lady, that poor woman. As a matter of fact, uh, G Motors made a joke because you know I, I I spit my chew in the toilet too, so I just you're gross. I just toss the the chew wad into the you're toilet. You're living it like like at an <laughs> animalistic level. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's nasty. I just that's why he's got a zoozium. I toss my. <laughs> <laughs> Toss my chew in the toilet. You're not paying that housekeeper <laughs> enough. <laughs> you know, my toilets are the only bad part. The rest of my place is nice and clean. I mean, I honestly felt bad for my mom when she came out because I was like, what did you do? Did you go in there? Cause I, I felt had bad. to. I was like, oh, you're kidding me, right? She goes, I was in there trying to scrape it off the sides with the bowl thing. I was like, you know, why? <laughs> I mean, I, I understand why, but at the same time. I was like, oh, I God. don't think she should have been having to clean that, man. That's, <laughs> there should there should be a janitor or something. Well, there you know? is, but it's not like they stop by after you have an explosion in a toilet bowl to take care I mean, of it. How often do they come, do you know? I don't know. It's like three times a week. Well, shit, you think they would have cleaned that then? Well, no, because it was late Friday night when you did it. Oh, so maybe they don't yeah, come until next nice Monday yeah, or something. During the week. Oh, wow. Fuck, man. They Fuck. weren't expecting, you know, El fucking <laughs> shit holio to blow up in there. Well, you know, uh, G Motors did say one time he was looking at my toilet and he was like, when your uh, cleaning lady comes, does she bring a belt sander? <laughs> wow. <laughs> to clean, clean That's the funny to you. <laughs> it is. It's Look, great. He loves it. It's, it's that my, you're so gross. It's uh, funny uh, to you. You know what? Because, yeah, it's my creation. It's my personal. That's not a creation. That is shit. There's <laughs> a difference. Shit. Yeah, but it's in the toilet. You have no choice but to do it as much as you eat and as what you eat. You have no choice. But it's, it's not a creation. But it's in the bowl, man. It's not like there's shit all over the walls and all over the house. You know what I'm saying? It's just mm, in the I toilet. I don't know. Might be. <laughs> no, there's no shit on the, on the walls. On One the of these floor. times you're just going to blow up and there is going to be. <laughs> Maybe so. So, anyway, yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah, that was great. <clears throat> so... But uh, you know, AK, you uh, you got me with something you were talking about on your guys' show. What's you know, that? you were talking about uh, everybody who wants to, you know, they they can't stay off their devices and <laughs> right. can't have a fucking personal conversation. Right. You know, I really think, and that sort of drove something home for me. I think some people, when you say like, you know, like well, with the chick on the the one site mm -hmm. I was telling you guys about. You know, when I say, call me, let's talk. Let's. Right. I think they actually get scared. Yeah. And they're like, oh, no, People I can't. People don't know how to have a conversation outside of font. <laughs> it, all conversations have to be font-based. That's fucking scary, man. Mm -hmm. You know, people can't talk and just be real. and Not be, anymore. Fuck that, man. I we have devolved into just speaking through Dude, virtual worlds. Fuck that. If, if somebody can't talk to me and have a conversation... 
and, and they just want to beep you? Because I know I was, I was talking to my buddy um, uh, Ray, too, mm-hmm. and he was saying the same thing. He's like, dude, he's like, the problem is I meet these chicks, and then I call them, they won't answer their phone, and then they text me and say, hey, look, you know, text me or something. And he's like, I don't want to sit and have a two-hour text conversation. I'd rather talk. So, yeah, man, I, I believe me. So I, that's going to be your new philosophy? Any of these girls, you're going to make sure you talk to them? Oh, yeah, you got to. Instead of beep-booing? Yeah, you oh, yeah. should. You got to, man. And if because they, there's just a certain... You, you can't capture the personality no, in a you text. Can't. No, you, you can't. You can't hear the inflection in the voice or the sarcasm in certain things. And it, spoken language is a lost art now. Conversation really through actual word is a lost art. Yeah, well, and you notice, too, if somebody's forced into a conversation, mm-hmm. they really don't know how to articulate something. Like if they did something, you know, fucked up, like, you know, uh, walked into you and you're like hey motherfucker what are you doing and then instead of retorting they're just like bleh, bleh, you know it's like they're stuck like you you totally caught them off guard just force them like i do yeah fuck up spellings and just don't give a shit what it looks like when you send it to them they're like look just call me oh then you get these fucking spell nazis you know <laughs> car is spelled with c-a-r not k-a-r well yeah <laughs> you know yeah. Well, i don't think i go that bad well no no you know what i'm saying though <laughs> people that just make a big deal out of you know stupid shit you know, like, uh, sorry, I don't speak. I speak. I don't. I don't write. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not. You know. Oh, there he goes. Beep. 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 I, I mean, knew he wanted to do it. I am here. I am good. That is great. You know, fuck all that. <laughs> I mean, I do appreciate written. You know what I mean? Like, I appreciate someone who can write intelligently. Um, yeah, oh God, then she hates mine. Can they speak and intelligently though? You know, ninety percent of the time, yes. If you can write intelligently, you can also speak. I, I mean, I, I, I'm just saying, I'm not gonna be like, oh, fuck the written word. I mean, because oh, I'm, I'm a writer. I'm a writer. You know what I mean? But no, 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 as no. far as a conversation and trying to connect with somebody personally, right. At some point, you're gonna have to have a face-to-face conversation. Well, and that's it. You know, if I'm gonna connect with anybody and have anything meaningful with them. Then hey, they're gonna have to talk to me at some point. And right. If they won't, we're eventually then fuck just it. gonna get to a point where even in relationships, we're just gonna sit on the couch and text each other. <sighs> wow, fuck that! I, I While watching a movie together, text like, "Did you see that?" <laughs> I'm sure there are people that already do that. Mm. That's some lame shit. You'd be sitting right next to the person right. rather than That's speaking. That's what they do. Yeah, there is like a I phobia. I mean, they go to they go to dinner <laughs> and they don't sit there and you know connect with one another. They're connecting and and doing their own shit on their own Facebooks. Or texting somebody or Instagramming them. I think all of us should throw our phones away right now. That's what creates a zombie. I would not miss it, to be honest. You wouldn't miss it? Uh, You know what? I I can't do that. I can't. I I mean, I have to keep it because I got to keep in touch with my kids. But Mm -hmm. other than that, I I wouldn't miss it at all. I got to look for a job, so I've got to have it. Otherwise, I left my phone at the bar last night, and it was like, oh, wow. I don't have to worry about it going off. I don't have to worry about anybody calling me. (laughs) I was in no rush to get over there today to pick it up. Well, see, what's bad is there was a time where I used to, if I was home or even out, I would just turn my cell phone off unless I needed to use it, yep. you know, because I had a landline and people could call and leave me a message there or they could have called me on my cell. And I've totally abandoned that mindset. Now I'm like totally dick whipped on my cell phone. I'm like, mm. oh, I need my cell. No, no, no. It can't be off. It can't be. <laughs> you know, you actually do that. Um, yeah. That in, noise? in a roundabout way. Like well, you saw me one day, Jerkman. Remember when my battery was dead? That's true. And I was just like, dude, you got to take me to the cell phone store now, man. Good I got to go God. to the cell phone store. Oh. I keep my phone on silent. should have seen me. I was a fucking I don't even. Case. I don't even turn it on to hear the notifications. So yeah. I'll get, I get to you when I get to you. Yeah, well I'm just not, I'm not connected to it like that. That's good. That's good. Well, don't apparently I'm not. I haven't had mine for over a month Well, now. that's true. That's right. It's you been don't... a nice break. Honestly, it has <laughs> been a nice fucking yeah. break. Yeah, I have to, like I said, I have to admit. I don't know who's calling me, speaking Last of which. Last night, and then, yeah, I you enjoyed just, the idea that it break. wasn't there. I mean, come on. We're we're old enough that we remember when there were not cell phones. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. When you weren't home, you just were not fucking home. And people would have to leave I you a message. I remember no answer machines. You didn't that's have to right, run to right. the phone for four rings before. That's it. People just hang on. They hung on right. until you picked up the damn phone. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. If you weren't home, there was no message. It was like, hey, yeah. you know, they try to call later or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Now it's like everybody's so damn impatient. Come on, you better pick up first fucking ring. Well, yeah, what do you mean you that? didn't answer? You have a cell phone. How come you didn't answer yeah. when I call? Well, you know what, what's ill though. See, is you'll have people texting you. You call them, 
and then they won't answer their phone. That's the thing right. that drives me fucking nuts. Like, come on, dude, that thing is in your hand. Now, the Don't one tell thing, me you can't answer that The bitch. one thing I will admit is that I'm not a big fan of talking on the phone. I'm not either. Only because I spent enough years in the call center industry and on the phone eight plus hours right. a day. Right, I'm not a big phone talker. I'd right. Read, but I do pr- appreciate exactly. personal conversations. Oh, exactly. yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, well, just a dimple daddy on a phone is ridiculous because then you see how much time you sucked up. And you're just like, oh, man, dude, I just blew a whole hour when I could have been doing this. But I guess my whole thing is I'd rather talk on the phone, though, than just be beepling, texting for two hours. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. there are some people. Shit, that was Kaylee's thing. You know, she wouldn't fight with me over the phone. She'd say, oh, I got to go. And then the next two hours was texting back and forth of saying hateful shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know. Well, you guys were in love, right? Yeah, we were just in love that way. That's how love really works. <laughs> By the way, I think it's funny. Here it was. We were talking about cell phones and things, and guess what? My phone rang. I don't know if you guys heard that. No, yeah, none I of us it. heard it. No? No. None nobody. Heard it at all? Wow. Oh, okay. That's great. <laughs> so, yeah, that's... Uh, that's These guys thing. are having fun over here. Yeah, they're over here being old ladies and crocheting fucking There's not being an old lady. How do you know. think it's an old lady? I don't give a fuck how many times you say that. It doesn't offend me nor deter <laughs> me from crocheting. I, you know what? I'm not I trying to offend some, you or deter you from crocheting. Shit. Well, with great. my crochet. Good you for know you. what? I was going to make you something, and now I'm not. Oh, okay. Well, fine. <laughs> yeah, look at him. He's so like, oh, <laughs> he's getting ass hurt. You can tell. Look at I him. Know. <laughs> I'm going to make you all something, actually. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool. That's nice, actually. No, I just, I'm just giving you shit. I don't I care. Know. I know. You know, I, it's just a funny thing to say, and I, I like your guys' reaction. So <laughs> I'm not trying to deter you from it. I think it's cool you found something that you like to do, you know. And I think more people should have hobbies. You notice that, too? Most people don't fucking really right, have hobbies. because they're too wrapped up in their electronics. Mm-hmm. Wow. They it, don't do, why do they any fucking thing else. All they do is watch reality TV and fucking Facebook. Yep. Swear to God. Right. That's it. I have not seen a reality show in I don't know how long. I haven't had cable in I don't know how many fucking years. I do. I am a movie watcher. I love fucking movies. Hmm. I love them. She watched a good one last night. I did. It was cool. Yeah. Winter's Tale. It was a love story. Oh. You'd Damn. like it. Have Has you seen it, Max? And um, no, I don't think and I would. Pegasus. Yeah. Uh, See, what happens, dude? Like demons, fucking. Oh no! Here fuck we go. Angels here we go. I knew. It. I knew that was. No. Gonna... Yep. I'm like, but it's you know, Will Smith is Lucifer. Really? Yeah. <laughs> now he wants yeah. to watch it. Yeah, that might be interesting. See, and I picked up. Oh, well, you know, I like the to professor read. Ginger Snap gave me a book. I haven't yeah. taken the time to sit down and read because. Just like everybody else, gotten so caught up in, oh, you're so busy, you don't have time, whatever. And to take the time out to sit down and actually just read and relax. I'd forgotten how much I really love that. When I get home, I don't turn on the TV right away. No. I'll sit in silence for a while and just crochet or read (laughs) something. You know what I mean? Like, I appreciate silence, and I think that people should get back to that. You really find your center, and you become very aware of yourself and your energy and, and what your body needs and what you need to do and what, you know, you prioritize what's important, you set goals. But when you just come in the house and you turn the TV on right away, you're numbing yourself out. Yeah. yeah. I well, mean, we got up this morning, just a step and I, I got up, got dressed, you know, got ready, kicked back, relaxed, opened the book, and it's like, oh, it feels so nice to sit here mm-hmm. and just read quietly yeah. just read no tv no nothing exactly. just relax you know just there's out. only two times i want to i go home and turn the television on and that is for person of interest which i love that show and uh elementary the only two i don't watch anything else it's, it's not it's bad to have a couple no. of shows that you yeah, like, I mean, you know i have a dvr and i do record mm-hmm. a couple of shows that i enjoy but it i'm you're not hey, glued to it like you maybe exactly. once was. Exactly. You know, it's like, ooh, I've got some time. Maybe I'll, I'd like to sit down and watch something. So maybe I'll right. click that up and watch this now. I hmm. have found that without TV, I have learned so much shit because I'm forced to find something to do. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm constantly learning stuff, whether I'm looking up the latest psychology articles or, you know, I'm looking up conspiracies right. or current events or trying to learn a new language i mean or crocheting crocheting right. just a whole bunch of shit that i probably never would have fucking done if i stayed glued to the a fucking potato in front of the tv facebook and that's you know that's it. my bad thing is i run to my computer 
That's right. what I do. Well, <laughs> I do a lot of my computer. But I mean, that's I, do I do a lot work. on my computer, but yeah. I look up a lot of shit. That's right. what I do. Or like psychology articles. I get on and like do that. research. I'm not and look on fucking up. Facebook on my damn computer. I think everybody thinks I'm on it 24 seven, but I'm actually not. You're not because I'll have to send you a message about something you don't fucking answer. Yeah, actually, hours later. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. when I sent you that message. Everybody thinks I'm on it all the time, but oh, well, I'm that's not. It's, it's like, yeah, it's it was like a, my phone. Well, has me logged in all yeah. the time. Yeah. I'm not really on. Right. I'm doing whatever. Not Somebody paying sent any me attention. something. They were like, "Oh, have you seen the pictures that I posted on my Facebook?" And I said, "No." And they're like, you're on Facebook. And I said, no, you got me on my phone on Messenger. I'm not on Facebook. Right. <laughs> so that explains those, like, I'll come back in and there's, you know, something in my inbox. And it's one of those gay-ass little beep chats, you know, where somebody's like, hi. Well, see, I have yeah. mine running here all night. So no matter what, I'm always on. Oh, so it shows you like being on. Yeah. yeah, see, my phone, I don't have to even be logged into Messenger or anything. If it's active, if I'm doing anything talking on the phone yeah or that's what mine i try whatever. to explain it that to fucking logs somebody me into every web how could someone not that get I that though i don't know like i left my phone somewhere i think i left it at work and i explained to that person you know my bad i left my phone at work and they're like well you should put a lock on your phone and i'm like what why I'm like well somebody was in your on your phone in your facebook and i'm like what are you talking about yeah, it's just like so it showed you active i said it will always show me <laughs> active. active exactly right. i have a cat if the cat paws if the cat paws at the phone and activates the screen. Your cat's on Facebook? She's yeah, on like it more than I am. Like my cat used to be on Facebook, remember? Yeah, I mean, she'll yeah. pop the screen. It'll show me active. And it's like, I have nothing to do with that. And I love when people go, well, how come you didn't respond? And blah, blah, blah. It's like, I didn't this feel is like not it. my be-all, end-all of life. I have very select friends that if I get a text or something from them, right. I will respond promptly Same to here. them. Right. As I can. Sometimes there's a delay because I'm in the middle of something. Yeah. Whatever. Sure. Yeah. I don't expect to respond. Okay, you know. as impatient as I am, I still don't expect a prompt. And that shocks me with you. Response. You know what I'm saying? Right. Especially yeah. with texting. I'm like, all right, I'll wait for them to get well, back. And to that's one. a younger age. Like, I'll tell you this. This I have a friend. He's younger, a lot younger. He's 22. Oh wow. And um, he was texting. I was texting. I texted him something. We were having a conversation, and then I texted him something, and he texted me back. Ten minutes passed by. And he says, sorry for the late response. I was something, something. I said, Damn. what are you talking wow. about? And I was like, honey, I am not these 21-year-old <laughs> girls. I said, you texts are meant to get to when you get to them. Right. Right. Sometimes I won't respond for hours, mm -hmm. and then I'll get back to you. Sometimes it's the next day. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I have very select friends that I know that I will respond to as soon as I can. But right. even that, there are times Still AK and I time. will text. And it'll be a couple hours in between yeah. our responses back yep. and forth because we're busy. Exactly. You That's know? It's called I mean, having a life. I can see if I it was. I think I responded her the next day. One time I passed out. I fell asleep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can I see if it was time. Her, like 1 o'clock in the afternoon the next day. And I uh, didn't think anything no. of it. I mean, I can see if it was time sensitive or something. Well, in well, that yeah, case, you better yeah, call someone. But Right. You know. But if that's the case, if it's sad and I don't get a response and I would pick up the phone and I would call and say, right. hey, you know, whatever it is that I needed. Exactly. You know, but, but I don't. Agree. Everybody wants this immediate response. You need to get out there. You know, you do this. But I find myself like giving rough. that. I find myself apologizing for late responses, and I'm like, why I am don't. I doing that? I do not apologize for my. I will text you when I text you. But what happens is that with Facebook messages, mm -hmm. likes, comments, text messages, it's an it's an immediate gratification, and right. it releases dopamine into your brain, and so you you literally become addicted to it. That's exactly Ooh, it. Look, yeah, I got so right people, back to you, man. people are checking their Facebook constantly because See what the it releases were. that dopamine. Right. Like, right. oh, they liked my picture. Oh, they made a comment. Right. And you become addicted to it. And so you're checking it constantly like a drug. You you keep it. You it's want like, more. That was a good more. sensation. I need more. I need Absolutely. more. I need more. It's that attention. That, you know, that, all with that my Facebook attention. notification. Well, it's that chemical reaction that you crave you don't it's realize a, that's right, what it's it is a physical but it is a physical chemical and it reaction makes you feel good and so you want it more right right well you know and you're right you do get kind of ass hurt like i noticed that like if somebody doesn't um you know somebody doesn't like it. well i get kind of mad when i put something up that i think is you know meaningful or that people should be oh no no you get mad yeah, yeah i never see anything on my facebook but that's fly the way by that it goes when you <laughs> here's here's two sides of it number one when you do post something meaningful or has some depth people are unable to grasp it and they don't know what to say so they leave it alone right. or yes. it's meaningful to you but doesn't mean <laughs> shit to somebody else that's your personal perspective that it's meaningful <laughs> right i did mean to ask you that did you see my comment about your whole prayer comment your status oh you know what i didn't even go into that page today i, I need to what did you say so, so what i had said was 
because there are people who believe in a higher power. That's fine. And they do. I'm not done. Okay. And they believe in the power. <laughs> they believe in the power of prayer. And just because you don't know that person doesn't mean that that higher power doesn't. Yeah, but does the, the quantity power, of prayers get yes, you? Yes, in, oh, in their bullshit. mind, their the power gives, of prayer will heal somebody. Exactly. It also gives them, them support. And it's about empathy and compassion. Right. That's nah, bullshit. And it's, what does it piss you what, off for anyway? Why am what I do you gonna, care? Why am I going to pray for some motherfucker? I don't but, know. But, okay, but, but all it's doing is for, giving for them mankind for right. simply having empathy for somebody. Who's in feeling need bad or that hurt somebody or sick is or dying. Sick or if so I, yeah. if so I you don't see know a kid, you, you see a kid fly by with cancer, and they and they're on their deathbed. You're gonna say, "Oh, fuck you, little kid, die, you bitch." Well, if I don't know you, I well, mean, it doesn't. Mean, it doesn't you know. It's still a compassion you for your small for people. World. You live in a very yes. self-centered. If it's not immediately right. connected to you, then <laughs> you don't damn care. Damn right. I, I don't give to, a fuck. You, you know what? You Everybody else does. So why not? You need you need to learn empathy. It'll change your life. Why not? I mean, hey. Everybody else Who gives a fuck about everybody else? Yeah, well, do it for you. Everybody, do it for why you. Why do it for me? What's Learn it going to do for me? Compassion. It's going to change your it's life in a way you, you never thought possible. To feel empathy for another human being. Exactly. That you I don't do if know. I know the person or if, if I'm connected why do you have to, to the helpless. person. Why do you have to You're know helpless. them? What, what hey, if you're just, going. Hey, like, horse to water, man. <laughs> and think, Again, here we go. Do you think God goes, all right, let's see here. We got, you know, cruise control has a great point that he always brings up. Mm-hmm. And it's the whole thing of, oh, okay, so we got some uh, three-year-old that's got cancer. And uh, let's see, oh, they only got two prayers. But, hey, you know, the 70-year-old woman with fucking, you know, uh, heart failure or whatever, she got like 80 prayers. Oh, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna fix her. I'm gonna, we're going to make but sure she not, makes it through. It, you're putting this in a whole other level. It's more about, hey, you know what? I understand that this is rough for you. It's about empathy being empathetic towards that person and showing them support that here's what it here's what it you know sometimes here's what it boils down to energy exists okay right with enough people this is the belief and i'm not again i'm not going to say i do or don't agree with it because i'm not going to put my personal twist on it but people believe that energy it does exist and we can agree on that if enough people are focused on something the same thing then that energy will in turn heal or help that individual out I don't know. Can we talk about positive I mean, thinking, yeah, negative exactly. thinking? It's the same concept. Of course. Well, I mean, but, well, no, but it's all on you. You're, you're the one you're, who needs to start the ball rolling. Your question was, why do people ask me to pray for someone I don't give a fuck about? Because yeah, they believe right. in the power of prayer. prayer. That's why. Right. Bottom line. It's simple as that. So, they believe in the power of prayer. That's why. So if we you're gotta, just selfish and don't give a fuck about someone you don't know, so you don't want to do it. And that's fine. That's your personal belief system. That's, right. that's cool. <laughs> Go with it if it makes you but happy. But why does it piss you off? But their belief is that prayer works. Right. Period. I and mean, that you ask pray, the question. Pray that's on your it. S- pray on your own though. But do, why do your own pray? Well, wait a minute. Why, what makes you God here that you say that they can't put that out there? What's the difference? What is it? Why is it? What's it doing to you? Personally, if you don't it's just pray, retarded. It's like don't 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 do it. pray for the person, then don't. But I, if the other people on their friends list will, and they believe right. in the power well, of prayer, yeah, hey, then fine. They can go what ahead and do it. What if they were angry that you didn't pray? But then you'd be angry at them. That might be the next thing. You'd be you know, angry at them Maybe these motherfuckers are like, they didn't pray for me. Well, so know, wait a minute. You're, you. What you're saying is they should not ask for a prayer for a dying child or someone's ill or something because they don't want to. You don't want to see it fly by your Facebook. No, it has nothing to do with that. So then why worry about it? Like, why are you asking? You know, do you really think? That uh, me personally, well, that I'm gonna be like, no, oh, I'm I, don't, I don't think I don't think they're looking for you personally. personally. They're asking a general for everybody right. they know. And those who I, I want would, to can. Those who don't don't have I to. I would never do that, and I do believe in a higher power. But I'm going to do all the praying. I'm not going to ask other niggas to start praying. For and that's people. fine. That's your that's choice. Your opinion. But other yeah, people you can believe do whatever that you like. they, if they ask and others do, that it helps. And right. that's up to them. I guess that's the. I mean. That, that's kind of the reason I put that out there. I would like to know why they do that. <laughs> anyway, we'll be right back, bitches. I will not. Later, I won't be back either. Oh, Sorry, both, guys. Like, both animals and objects are leaving. All right, yeah. later. <laughs> What up, though? It's the undeniable JT Money, a.k.a. the Bitch Eyesa. And you tuned in to STEM Radio with Maxwell Silverhammer and GJ the Jerk Man. Heavy that. And guess what? They hate hoes all much as much as I do. So don't sleep on these cats. 
And speaking of sleeping, don't forget to check out my new single, Hustling, from my new project, Morning Wood. It's going down heavy, baby. And speaking of being out, I'm out like a busted traffic, like you already know. Get him, Jay! Answer me this. When did having a lot of YouTube hits and hella MySpace friends begin to determine whether a rapper has good music or not? Let's be serious. You wouldn't trust half of these people to wash your car or your dog. But you gonna let these people determine what music you listen to? That's crazy. You gotta be a leader, man. Not a follower. Not a follower. And check out that classic album by your leader, Boy Black Eyes. 5.0 Reasons. 10th anniversary, 1998 to 2008. It's that classic Bay Area G Funk and my music. Sample the entire album at CDBaby.com, Rhapsody.com, Napster, and iTunes. Or just Google your boy Black Eyes. That's Y A B O Y Black Eyes. He was a young white kid from the suburbs who had it all. Yo, Pops, when you gonna paint my motherfucking Bentley and shit? Sorry, son, I'll get to it. It's just been very hectic down at the office. But he wanted something more. Yo, I wish I could be a G, dog. He wanted to come from those mean streets and be a G like his compadres that he looked up to. Yo, man, if only I could have a gack, dude. I'd bust the most caps out of any G. Then he met Jay Fucka on MySpace, where he learned to rock up that crack cocaine with the dopest of OGs from the street. Yo, we we gonna hit the track right now. We gonna slang these hover rocks, these motherfucking fiends, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude, can I roll with you, dog? Can I roll in your 6'4"? It's a tale of urban struggle. Yo, you gotta do what you gotta do to survive out in this bitch, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude, I can dig it, I can dig it. It was a tale of romance. Hey, dog, you mind if we sleep in the same bed? Gerald Jismbag and Harold Hardcock give it two thumbs up. It's Black Cock Down. Do you hate women that you can't fuck? Have you tried to rub your dick on some woman's foot and she turned you down? What the fuck are you doing? Uh, well, if so, you need Game for the Mentally Lame. That's right. If you're a mental retard and women are trying to kill you with their Google Cheesy Leasy, then this is the book for you. That's right. Learn brand new pickup lines. Hey, baby, you see my face? Wanna hear on it? No, I don't want to sit on your face, but I'd like to split your fucking lip. Or you can also learn brand new ways of being smooth and romantic with the come-ons. Hey, how about we go have some hookie? And then after that, we can go to the rum runner. Great, just what I've always wanted, my own drunken alcoholic retard. No thanks. So see, the proof is in the tard. So get Game for the Mentally Lame for only $19.99 if you call now. Order Game for the Mentally Lame for all tards and those who can't quite get it. At last, the wait's finally over. Be Sick returns from a long hiatus with a brand new album entitled Mr. Zero Tolerance. Available for digital download only. Be Sick's no punches pulled approach on the mic gives listeners what they want as well as gives the rap game a well-deserved kick in the ass with such hard-hitting gems as the title track, Mr. Zero Tolerance. Mr. Zero fucking tolerance, you fix at your butt. My touch will bust in the gut. My toleration is nuts. Fucking bust your in a bitch. I'm or the laid-back, fun-filled street I'm anthem entitled nice. Change of Pace you featuring Ghost. This is something to bust as a gift to the haters. So turn it up loud just to piss off your neighbors. And if you out rolling, you be getting a ticket. And if you straight to the guts, bar, blind to the facts. Dick. Blind to the facts that your mind's in a trap. Blind to the facts that with time we adapt. Blind to the facts of what you don't understand. Blind to the facts by the media scan. Blind to the facts of what you read in a book. Blind to the facts of you Download your copy today of Mr. Zero blind Tolerance to from www.cdbaby.com or go to www.cdbaby.com slash cd slash b sick 2 Download your copy today. Keep the realness in the rap game. If you're a fan of hip-hop and R&B, join me, the Bruh Bruh Ren, for a full non-stop hour of back-to-back -back slappers. Uh, back-to-back slappers. Where the playlist spans from genres like R&B soul. R&B soul. Hip-hop bangers like.
Pacific Standard Time. And Saturday at midnight Eastern Standard Time. Only on the Tough Love Show on JJ.fm. We are Anonymous, and you're listening to Maxwell Silverhammer. Fuck that guy. And DJ Jerkman. Yeah, fuck that guy too. Only on STEM Radio. Damn, this shit really hurts me. When's my radio show on? Um, I think it starts about another hour from now. Does it? Is it I 9 so. o'clock? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, yeah. About an hour Is from now. Okay, cool. So I 10 could, minutes, something like I that. I could still call? You and, should be able to. Oh, okay. Fuck it, A, man. So that was that was my <laughs> friend Bill that called me. And it's like, dude, you, you know I'm on the motherfucking air. Apparently, <laughs> you, he you, does not remember. Like with all your other close friends that do not remember, you you're know, on the air for eight fucking years now almost. And that's some crazy shit. Um, you know, like Tim, he's that way. Oh, you doing a show tonight? My family, they're the same way. Oh, you got your show tonight? You know, and you're just like, how do you fucking not know this shit? How do you shit? not remember after almost eight years? Yeah, I mean, this is not like a year. It's eight years. Uh, okay, not even two or three. <laughs> We're talking five yeah, beyond that. Exactly. It's like, okay, this has been going on for almost a half a decade. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> for, a de- well, for, a half, uh, for Cor- yeah. Uh, yeah, almost a decade, yeah. Almost a decade, and yet you still don't have the whole fucking... I'd say about three quarters of a decade. And people are like, well, not everybody's watching you. Know, well, but come on, man. Like you said, this has been a long time. And, yeah, you know, it has been. And I always post on Facebook. This guy's on my Facebook. He can see. Tune in, 7 p.m., blah, 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 blah. Have you ever thought about this, though? Hmm. You know, years down the line, if we're still doing this, what if one day we both said or everybody said, you know, we're just going to stop the show. What would we do? What, what would be the, the final finale? Hmm. Like an end? Uh, yeah, like last... a, how, would you, how would you end STEM radio? You know, I really haven't given it much thought. <laughs> I don't Cause, know. Because when you just said that, that popped in my head. Like, how would you end something that's went on as long as it has and, and kept alive? You know, it's kind of like if someone walked up to me and said, well, if you ever had to shut all talk down, what would the, be the last thing you would do there? I don't hmm. know. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Well, it's kind of like, you know, Mike, he's sporadic, sporadic sometimes, you know, right. where – you know, he'll say, oh, this is going to be my last show on All Talk. And he's, yeah. not very, he's not very ceremonial about it, if you trip. Right, Mike's yeah. Kind of, Mike's a little bit robotic in that way. <laughs> yeah. you know? And he's like, oh, yep, this is going to be my last show here at All Talk. Because I don't, I don't think he knows. I think he knows it's not going to be his last. I think that's it. That's You can kind of tell. He's like, got he's an a, entertainer in his blood. And yeah. he's got that. He gets the itch, man. Mm-hmm. He's going to come back and go, okay, I'm going to do my show again. Yeah, I can't not do this because he has it in his blood to do it. Right. It's just, it's natural. It's like, uh, this is my outlet. This is what I I do but yeah if, if for some reason i ever just had to stop hmm? doing the show for whatever how the fuck would we stop it? yeah how would you i mean what would be like the like the you knew you were like a set time what would be the last like two weeks what would the craziness what would, you know how would it end i, I mean wow. i mean would you just finally just shut the mics off and say you know thank you for all the years and i mean i think it would probably be sad it would be very sad you know, and it would be something where you're just like man i mean you, yeah because you, once you would you would know that that last minute's coming up and the silence is there and you're like saying goodbye for the last time <laughs> it would probably be kind of a tearful show yeah. i'll be honest <laughs> with you you know it would just be like oh man this yeah. is it <laughs> this is um, it this is the end <laughs> but it would have to be something pretty well, major. yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, as a scenario, because when you said that, that just kind of popped in my head for some reason, and I thought, wow, you know, what would what would, what would be the ending? Yeah, it would be weird, because even if I, okay, let's say for some reason, God forbid, you know. You got something you couldn't uh, carry on. I right? lost my job or something, and I couldn't pay, you or, know. Or, I, or, or you couldn't carry on. Maybe maybe you could, 
but maybe some illness or something prevented you at one point to, you know. Right, that's true. Well, or, wow, yeah, there's all kinds of fucked up things, you know. Or, can... or, or there will be a day that you will walk away. I mean, we all will have it's, to. Yeah, it's going to just have to happen where yeah. something will come up and, well, shit, it almost happened with the, the move to Colorado. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, that is true, yeah. How would that have gone over? Yeah, like, you would have said your last goodbyes. Like, this is it, this is the last radio just show. just think, that would have been four years ago almost. That you would have been, wow. yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Look, at, look at all the shows in the last four years you would have missed out on. And all the uh, craziness and things. You know, that's the thing. You're right. There was a lot of stuff that did happen in the last four years. Oh, how, I mean, look at all the new people like AK, uh, Jerry, um, all even, the. Even Flying Fish. Flying and Fish, and all that. You know, she moved to uh, uh, Utah. I Utah. saw that. Yeah. I commented on that, actually. That's kind of interesting. But all that you would have missed out on, all that different uh, the people, the, the, the toe the, sucking I got to yeah, do. Yeah, all the. You know, there was some pretty awesome shit that's happened. Yeah. You know, that. <laughs> damn, yeah. And, and just. You know, other experiences that, you know, off the air experiences, well, like the time we went to Fry's and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucked with the people there. And, you know, so, yeah, wow. You know, it's like, well, I know you never read them as a kid, but I, I used to, those choose your own adventure books. And uh, so it's like, you wonder if you could, you know, like go back through it and see what yeah. would happen if you did go through with that crazy plan. Yeah, and something. how would you, uh, you know, obviously that would shut a, a big part of your life out. So mm. you would readjust to, how would you. I mean, what would you do, you know? I, yeah. Or how would I be? Like, <laughs> yeah. would I have the itch? And then would I be like, I'm sorry, I can't do this. I got to go back to Vegas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? So how would that have ended up, I wonder? Yeah, if you would have been out there and you would have been every night, no STEM radio, you know, no job that you're working now, your life a total change. You know, wow. I mean, for something like that, I mean, a major job, that is a major, that would, that would be like me closing all talk down. Oh, yeah. Well, and what would I do with myself? <laughs> right. And you're thinking, well, where, where do you go? You yeah. know, it's like one of those things that just leaves you going. Where do we go from here, man? What, yeah. what happens? You know? I mean, you, you find things, but I guess once you've meet, um, made a plateau for yourself or made it to the, a plateau of something, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard. It's like, you know, someone that's worked in a factory, even if it's just been a factory for like 20, 30 years and they have to face retirement. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know and, and it's kind of bitter uh, sweet for them in a way you know you know they they don't have to work now but it, they're they're being something well, in their life that was a major part of their life is gone and that just goes to show you that this shit is not always about money no you know because people are like well what are you gonna do when are you gonna take it to the next level what next level well yeah. it's here <laughs> i'm here at it <laughs> yeah you know i mean what more can i do you know i this is you know your video your youtube i mean yeah. we've, we've done i mean I'm well, what about making money with it man what about you know, you're just like well, well, why <laughs> that's going to change the whole dynamic, dynamic of what of i'm everything. doing everything yeah yeah it would so why well, your that? show definitely yes oh yeah <laughs> i mean fuck I, I couldn't talk about half the stuff i talk about now <laughs> not even close <laughs> you know i have to stick it to fucking political this and political that which by the way the driver that drove me up here asked me what my topic was going to be today oh boy uh, you know and I had to explain to him, nah, man, I, we don't, you know, I don't usually do a top. I have an interview coming on, but, right. you know. Uh, before. Just wondering, too, where would you have been had you stayed at KLAV? Oh. How would your show? I wonder what. You mean, like, if I totally dismissed it, Millions email? Yeah, if you would have dismissed Millions email, me and you obviously would not be sitting here talking know, right now. Be. So, uh. you know, and, and experienced all the stuff we've done over the last almost eight years now. Wow. You know, and. Supposing you would have been happy there and kept it going, I just wonder what your show would have sounded like, though, because you couldn't swear, you couldn't, you know. What I think it, it would probably have been very short-lived. You think so? Honestly, I so think you don't think you could have stay, stayed with it and just grown accustomed to their way of doing it. I don't think so because I, I even then, you know, the fact that I had to keep it FCC compliant, right? You know, I was very, I, I still felt <laughs> stifled, right? And I wanted that opportunity. So believe me, there was some tempting shit, but I was like, well, I don't know, but I have to pay for it. Nah. But then when the thing with Brother Leo had it, that's one thing you can thank Brother Leo for. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, when that shit happened, I was like, like, okay, I'm out of here. I was mad because I'm like, okay, now this really sucks. We need to find a better pla platform for this. <laughs> and then that's when I said, you know what, let's check this email out. So and see, that's why you, I say, you know, a lot of things, I mean, you have direction in your life, and but I do believe a lot of things are going to be the way they will be. See, that's it. That's it. I mean, I don't. People say, "Well, I need direction." Well, no, you have direction. I you think, just don't realize. Yeah, it. No matter what. Okay, look at it this way. Even if, even if you personally 
have absolutely no direction in life, okay? Mm. Life is still going to happen. It will take you in a direction, whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Something's <laughs> still working, yeah. autopilot. Yeah, I mean, even if even if it is getting up in the morning and you do the same thing every day, you get up in the morning and you just eat and lay in the fuck. You know, sooner or later you're going to get the diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> Something's going Some to happen. Some health issue will happen. You're <laughs> right. right. Yeah. There will be something that pulls you away from the stagnation of whatever. Yeah. And you, uh, you can never never say that life is never going to happen unless you get out and do something <laughs> it will happen yeah well that's it and see that's my brother and i disagree pretty heavily on this you know where he's like well nobody's gonna come knocking on your door and you're gonna make things happen and da, 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 da. but i'm thinking well shit's gonna happen regardless regardless and, you're right and that's the theory I good mean, or I, bad or i guess know. what's good for the goose isn't always good for the gander you no. know so maybe some things just don't work for my brother like that but at the same time you know it's well, some people like to go for things. They feel they feel more accomplished in life if they're going for it, which I can understand yeah. that, that because, yeah, I mean, sometimes you are not going to get maybe one thing you want. I've just let you go for it. My thing has been this, though. Whenever I've gone for something, mm -hmm. it never works out. You know, it right. just I just keep getting it gets further and further away. And once again, if we I chase it, if we all did everything exactly alike then there would be no differences in anything. Pretty fucking boring life, yeah. Well, yeah, it would be no differences. I mean, if, if everybody did a set thing, and I think, well, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm going to correct myself on that. Even if everybody did do the same thing, still life is going to happen. Like I said, okay, yeah. suppose in every day you have to line up, right? Mm. Everybody gets up, you put this certain suit on at a certain set time, you get out, you walk down the line, and you fall in, 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 in a formation out your door. And, uh, no matter what, no matter how prepared that is every day, you have a thousand people doing that. Three of them are going to get the diarrhea and shits. There's one who's going to get the puke. So the other one's going to not. You know, right. It's Something going, different's going to happen for you. It, life will dictate what will happen. Yeah, that's true. And everybody's going to have a different thing happen to yeah. them. Like you said, you know, yeah, you fall in formation, you all march, whatever. Yeah. But somebody might all of a sudden, you know, collapse twist their ankle or something. One, or, one might die. One might collapse. One may, one may, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. But it, it, it can never stay a constant. It doesn't. See, and that's it. So life is built with change already. Life has already got change built into it no matter what you do. Yep. So when people say, well, it's not going to fall. Well, sometimes it does. You know, sometimes opportunities, I, what I've found, like I said, when I chase things, they get further and further away. Then I get discouraged, and it's like beating your head on a wall. What the right. hell's the point? But then when you're not chasing anything, you know, and you kind of, you know, give up on it. or And it still happens, right? It still happens, <laughs> It's right? no matter what you're doing. I mean, it just... It, just comes to it to fruition it materializes i don't know i mean that's just the way things have worked for me and you know the weirdest thing about everything what's that no matter what goes on in life uh-huh wow the ending comes doesn't <laughs> it? yes it See, does told you <laughs> well, bitches i'm maxwell silverhammer and i'm gj hate to bring the end here what we got to jerkman and that's the story there bitches see ya